Hello everyone, my name is Holden Hardman. Thank you so much for joining me again for another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Disney Channel original movie, Halloween Town. This movie is a classic. I used to watch it every single year when I was a kid. I would really like to just get more into the lore of Halloween Town, the truth about Halloween Town that is hiding in plain sight. How Sophie, and not Marnie, is not only the most powerful witch in these films, surpassing even Agatha Cromwell, but also the most powerful Cromwell in over a century. A few years back, before I had any following on YouTube, I made a video about this very topic, but it never gained much traction. This is also the first time I noticed that somebody took verbatim what I said in that video shot it themselves and then repurposed it on their own channel. I think I was like getting 50 views per video at the time on a good day and someone just stole my video word for word and posted it as their own. So now I'm gonna steal my own video with Halloween right around the corner. It's time to talk about it again. I know, I know you must be skeptical. After all, the Halloween Town films follow the story of Marnie and her growth and journey as a young witch. But if you pay attention, you'll discover that had the events of Halloween Town taken place when Sophie was turning 13 and not Marnie, Sophie would have one-shot Calabar on her own, no questions asked. The events of Halloween Town focused on Marnie turning 13 and that if she did not at least begin her witch training by that Halloween, she would lose her powers forever. Being a witch was such a surprise to Marnie that she didn't even consider it a possibility at first. Then, you have Sophie, who is seven years old at the time of the first Halloween Town movie, who by sheer willpower is able to levitate a cookie over to her. Now the mother admits that there have been times in the past where Marnie has also done some strange things, and she too has shown signs of magical abilities that aren't displayed in the movie, but Sophie, continuously and consistently shows off her superior magical abilities as the movie progresses. Let me just start off by mentioning how Sophie is even able to get into Halloween Town. Their grandmother enters the front of the bus, prompting Marnie and Dylan to enter and sit in the back. Once in Halloween Town, Sophie just reveals herself. How did she get on the bus without being seen by Marnie, Dylan, or Agatha? by being the most powerful witch in existence, that's how. On the way to their grandmother's house, they approach this gate that has this giant, almost cartoon-like lock on it. Now Marnie legitimately attempts to use magic to unlock the gate, and she fails over and over again. That is, until Marnie is distracted, where Sophie just looks over at the gate, exemplifies her superior power by not only unlocking the gate, but by transforming it into a living creature. She literally created life. She also never reveals how she opened the lock. Sophie, how did you do that? This is something she's clearly experienced before because she's so competent in doing it, and also why she's so unsurprised when she looks over at the frog. Just another day in the life of a level 99 witch. Later on in the movie, when poor Agatha is being taken away by Luke, who is it that senses it and notices it? Frickin' Sophie. Look, Grandma's going somewhere with the wiener dude. This is the first time where we truly see her subtle magic of intuition and precognition. The wiener dude. Far superior to any witch or warlock shown in the entire franchise, but I'll get to that. Earlier on in the movie, they hitch a ride with this skeleton cab driver by the name of Benny. It was really friendly, really fun, really quirky Disney Channel. After gathering the ingredients for a potion that they want to use to free Calabar's victims, they again see Benny, the friendly cab driver from earlier. Sophie, using that same magical ability we saw earlier, immediately realizes something is wrong. Unlike Dylan or Marnie. The bad thing is that Dylan, being an idiot, even attempts to get into the cab before being stopped by, you guessed it, Sophie. It didn't matter in the end because Dylan still tried to get in the car. This is when they realize that Benny actually is in fact nuts. Marnie doesn't even try to use any magic. She tries to physically overpower the skeleton, leaving the solution once again to Sophie who has to show off her superior intelligence by finding a dog, setting it free, and sicking it on that cab driver. It is through her action that she has now freed both her brother and sister. Thanks, Soph. With the aid of Sophie, Marnie is finally able to complete the potion. But Marnie, our supposed heroine, cannot even remember the spell to ignite Merlin's talisman. It is seven-year-old Sophie who now combines all of her skills, her intelligence, 
her intuition, her magic baby, to teach Marnie how to ignite the talisman. It is absolutely worthy of note here that had Sophie not been here for this specific moment, Marnie would never have ignited the talisman, her mother and grandmother would never have been freed, and both Halloween Town and the entire mortal world would have been corrupted forever. Sophie was the single most important factor in keeping Halloween Town and the mortal world safe. During the finale, when Calabar is at his last stand, all the Cromwells line up hold hands so that they could join their powers to defeat him. Dylan, however, the skeptic throughout the entire movie, refrains. Now, Sophie obviously could have destroyed Calabar all on her own at this point, were she so inclined, but aside from her raw power, she still loves and supports her weaker, less impressive family members. A true empath, she recognizes that if the family gathers around and destroys Calabar without him, he would have spent the rest of his life living in this household full of witches, feeling like he never truly belonged, and instead would have gotten hooked on methamphetamines in high school. Sophie couldn't let that happen. Instead of allowing her brother to go through this unnecessary struggle, she reaches out her little baby hand to her brother to allow him to combine his pathetic powers with the rest of the family. Once they're all connected, Sophie gives Calabar a taste of 3% of her full power and destroys him with absolute ease. Even Agatha was surprised how quickly Calabar was defeated. And bear in mind, all of this happened during the first movie when Sophie was just seven. Consider two years later when she's nine and she's able to sense Cal's evil presence when Marnie, her mother, Agatha, and Dylan could not. What's the matter, dear? Somebody's coming. Or when the final portal to the human world is closed permanently and their mother is turned into a real monster, who does Marnie turn to? Sophie, the most powerful Cromwell since the start of the bloodline, and she's also a third degree black belt in real life. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know your thoughts on the power of Sophie Cromwell. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Share with your friends and family that love Halloween Town. That's it for now and I'll catch you in my next video. Take care.